the whole point. Is because they're ha who they're cursed him? Who uh, seriously? Who here thinks that they follow? Have, and you have to stand before God one day and say, God, I followed your law perfectly. Perfectly. You God doesn't law, expect you to be perfect. That's what it says. No, but if God doesn't expect you to be perfect. Why would you ask you that question? Cursed is anyone who does not do all the things written in the law. If you all the things? The, yes. If you reject all, if you reject the Old Testament, and that's fine. If you reject the words of Moses, that's fine. But that is what Moses. Okay. Now read, read Luke fifteen seven. The answer is in there. Is it either seven? Repentance. Then what's the what's the? Yeah. We we coming to that. We coming. Yeah, yeah, brother, no, but what's the reason? Oh, but, but repentance in, in, in Judaism. In Judaism? Yeah, Jews. Jews exactly. They, Judaism has always been looking for a Messiah to do what Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. Can I check the box? Yeah. Luke 15, 7. Yeah. It's the story of the prodigal son. No. Uh, it's a is story it, of the... Is, okay, maybe it's... I tell you in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Okay, so yes. one person... So Moses is wrong, is what you're saying. Bro, listen. When he says there is joy in heaven for what? One person who repents. Yep. Now, why is that joy in heaven? Because God expects you to repent when you make a mistake. Same, same in Islam. In Islam, we have the same teaching. That Kulli Bani Adam Katta wa Khairul Kattain at Tawabun. That every child of Adam, that means every human, commits sins. Yes? And the best amongst them are the ones who repent. Okay. Similarly, Jesus is saying in Luke 15 7 that there is joy in heaven for repentance. Yep. Yes? For one sinner who repents, sure. then for 99 people who don't need repentance. Who doesn't need repentance? The ones who, don't, who are not sinners. Can we read this yes? in context? Okay, read in context. Now, tax collectors and sinners were all gathering to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and teachers of the law, whom Jesus vehemently opposed, he cannot deny that in Scripture, says this man welcomes sinners' needs with them. So what Jesus is saying is that he gets more joy from one sinner who repents, which is everyone, than over all of the Pharisees who he did not believe were saved. No, 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 no. It saved. says 99 people who, who need no repentance. Are you saying the Pharisees didn't need repentance? Come on. You're, mis you're, 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 you're misconstruing the passage now. But that is, that is what the passage is saying. It says anyone who doesn't need repentance, context, yes, for them, God, for God, that, that is not really even important. But one person who is a sinner and he repents, there is joy in heaven. Come on, it's clear, man, guys. Sure. Well, no, that, it, that, that 99 people is definitely not the Pharisees we are talking about. It, it definitely is. I can so you're saying Pharisees don't need repentance? Jesus is saying they, the Pharisees didn't think they needed repentance. And Jesus is saying, look, you see this? This is a lie, and I'll show you all. So there's the story of the lost sheep, the story of the lost coin, the story of the prodigal son. These are all together. Okay. The older son, okay, he, in the end... So you're saying the Pharisees, according to... Even the Pharisees are you saying don't need repentance? Jesus, that's what, okay, Jesus is saying right. that, you have to think about it, he's making a point to the Pharisees. The Pharisees think they don't need repentance, Jesus is saying you do. And this is, this is the, what I'm saying to you is that God... You do need repentance. Yeah. That's what I said, my friend. Yes, you're, you're agreeing with me now. Yes, but what Jesus... But what, what you're saying that God expects you to be perfect. To me, perfection means someone who doesn't need repentance. Just like the Pharisees, if they believe that. So you're in fact agreeing with me and don't even realize that. We're talking cross purposes. Okay, okay, so okay, so okay. can anyone be righteous? On no, no one. In fact, I, I the the, uh, the hadith I quoted just now, yes, it clearly states that even Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that every human being, yes, they sin, they make some mistakes. Yeah, okay. Yes? So I, I and we all agree. I'm and the, uh, yeah, and, and the best amongst them is the one who repents. And this is exactly the teaching of Jesus Christ as well. But anyone who says that God expects you to be perfect, they have to show me a passage from the Bible. I, I don't have internet here, but I think the one we just looked at was Paraphrase, oh. paraphrase it to me, no problem. Yeah. We don't want you to be perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you think you are perfect? No, absolutely. But, okay. but I do believe that if you look at the law, there is always atonement needed for sin. You know, earlier I asked him the question um, with regards to Jesus. When he was on earth, yes, you believe he was a perfect role model, a perfect example for mankind? Yes? When Jesus prayed and worshipped, whom did he pray to and how did he pray to? How did he pray? Jazakallah, brother. Thank you very much. He prayed, he prayed to his Father in heaven. Yeah. What is your answer? He did pray to the Father in heaven. It makes sense in Philippians 2 when it talks about how God, who is in the nature of God. So no, no, we're talking about prayer right now and worship. So when Jesus was asked, how shall we pray? What was his response? He, yeah, he gave the Lord's prayer. Exactly. Yeah, and how does the Lord, how does the God's prayers begin? Our 
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And Good. Jesus is praying to his Father. Okay, so in both cases, Jesus is focusing on one person, not three persons. Do you agree? Okay. Did Jesus, did Jesus, did any prophet in the Bible, in fact, either the Old Testament or the New, did any apostles, did any, anyone from Jesus' community, or even Paul, in fact, did anyone worship a triune God? Did anyone pray to a triune God in the entire Bible? Uh, I've asked you this question already. I want to ask your friend if you don't mind. In the New Testament, you see different. No, no, new or old. Anywhere. Okay. I'm not limiting it to. Paul making cries says Maranatha, which means come, Jesus, come. That's obviously he's making a cry to the Lord. A prayer and worship. Just like the way Jesus, he falls down on his head and prays to God in the Garden of Gethsemane before the. Before the crucifixion, he prays again to the Father. Yes? Okay. Every instance of Jesus' prayer is focused and directed only to one person, not three persons. Does someone, can someone pull up a Luke uh, 24? Does someone have a Bible? I Luke thought you just pulled up Luke, didn't you? No, I pulled up Daniel. Okay. Um, Remember, it has to be a prayer and worship to okay. a triune God. I'll focus on worship first. Is that okay? That's fine, yeah. Okay. Um, because prayer actually is worship. Do you know that? Yes, yes, I, I would agree. Okay, <laughs> okay, go to where it talks about the Son of Man. Um, okay, the Son of Man coming in. Uh, oh, wait, it's not Luke 24. In the clouds of heaven? Yes. And so Jesus makes that comment, right? He makes the comment at the same time he says, uh, I know because... Uh, How does answer my, my question about praying to your triune God? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I promise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. So Jesus, and I remember, maybe it's Luke 20. He talks about the Son of yeah, Man. Sure coming on the yeah. clouds of heaven, okay? And he is very obviously, and I think you all agree. I'm not asking if Jesus is divine or not. That's no, no, a different question. No, no, no. I'm talking about worship, okay? And very obviously alluding to a pa passage in Daniel. We're talking about the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven that I'll read. In my vision that I look at, at night that I look, and there before me was one like the Son of Man. So obviously what Jesus is referring to, coming with the clouds of heaven. Same language in Luke. This is Jesus' words. He was approached, uh, he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He, Son of Man, was given authority, glory, and sovereign nations, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. And so you see, Jesus is obviously calling himself the Son of Man, who Daniel said is worship. And I think we would all So that's, that's a prophecy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Daniel. So you're saying that's a prophecy already come or going to come? That's going to come, but Jesus okay. is so himself. So, so we can agree right now, it hasn't happened. Okay? So in the time, let me get this right. In the time of Jesus, he himself said not to worship him, but to worship only the Father. Okay? Where does he say that? Sorry, not he, when he says worship only the Father, he implies by that. In the same so not explicitly he says worship, don't worship me. But when he says worship, pray to the Father, like in the Lost Prayer, in every ex example that he said, none of that at that time did he say worship me. At no point did he say that. So the question remains, where in the Bible does it say, or sorry, by action do we see anyone worshiping or praying to anyone other than God the Father? Or one well, we person. See, we see Thomas exclaim, my Lord and my God. We see As an exclamation. Worship. Okay. Well, you know the word worship over there in Greek is not translated as latrio, it's proskunio. Proskunio is like paying adoration. Not When you say worship, the, the Greek uses a different term. And never has latrio, which is real worship, adoration of God Almighty, is used for Jesus Christ. Next. Uh, it's either Matthew or Luke, one of the times he silences. Huh? You asked about the triumph God, worship Yeah, I asked. They yeah, can't show because well, the, way, the way they're trying to build up the case is yeah. to show like Jesus was worshipped. Yeah. But everywhere we see the example of Jesus being worshipped, yeah. it is not really worship like you worship God. It is paying adoration. For, you know there are people who are called God other than Jesus. Do you know that? Are you aware of that? You're talking about in... Um Landlord is called God. When it's, it, okay, that's the word Elohim, which was a word used, it, we translate it as gods, but it's actually a very uh, more in-depth word. It means more like spiritual beings. And to make that argument... You know Satan is called the God of the world. He's, he's, he's called the Elohim. Exactly. The Elohim, the term God, is used for other than God Almighty. And it's used even for the Jews, human beings, you know? Like Psalm 82, 6, which Jesus, Jesus alludes to in... John 10 34 they are called gods sorry you are called gods yes and then he goes and to clarify that all I do is I call myself the son of God and the son of God or God's son means someone who is righteous again so we have to look at the context of 2000 years ago how the Jewish people address God as the father you know like in John 20 17 
Jesus says, I go to my father and your father, my God and your God. Jesus so Jesus is acknowledging what? that he has a God. Do you agree? Jesus during his time acknowledges that he has a God. How can God have a God? Yeah, like calling God the Father is actually not a very first century Jewish thing. It's actually something Jesus introduced. It's not just Father. Jesus calls him my God. Yes, I agree. But you say they always said Father. That's not true. Jesus said Father. That was something very early that Jesus introduced. So does God have another God? Are you saying the Jewish people didn't call God Father? Early on, that was not a way that they addressed God because you, you can read the Jewish people's argument. They say he calls God his Father. That in Jewish, the Jewish people were saying he's making himself equal with God. It's John 6 or John 8? No, oh, it's John 10 30. John 10 30? Really? Yeah. Okay. I, my Father and I are one. So the one? No, no, no. I'm talking about the Jewish people. Yeah, the Jew, in the same passage, the Jewish people later on, when he said this, my Father and I are one, they picked up stones to throw at him. And, they, and Jesus says, for what good works have I done that you're stoning me? And then they respond, you being a mere man are calling yourself God. And that is when jo uh, Jesus said, which I just pointed out, that you are called gods and the scripture cannot be broken. Yes. And I, all I say is I am the son of God. Yes, I'm paraphrasing here. So this is what Jesus is saying. He never even took this, uh, what do you say, this blasphemy against him. Yes, because they are the ones who are making this accusation of blasphemy. Jesus says, that's not what I say. Do you think, don't you think Jesus would have just said straight up when they said that? Like, no, I'm not God at all. But he he said, did. I and the Father are one. No, because he said I and the Father are one, that's when they understood that he was blaspheming by saying you are God. So he, so so he, he said, in fact, he defended that allegation of blasphemy against him by saying you are called gods. And all I do is I'm calling myself the son of God. You see, he at that point, at that point in time, I agree with you. It should have been the perfect time to not say such a thing. It would have been the perfect time to say, yes, I'm claiming God to be God. But no, he didn't. He said the exact opposite. How, how would you, I'm interested, because I'm sure you've gotten this before. Yeah. How would you defend um, Jesus calling himself by Yahweh's name in John 8, uh, 50, 50? The term Yahweh is not there in the New Testament. No, it's what is Yahweh, which is the same term. The term Yahweh is not in the New Testament. If you want to translate Yahweh, it's a tetragrammaton, yes? And the Jews translate it in a different way. The Protestants translate it in a different way, yes? So I don't know honestly whom to believe because both of them translate in a different way. The Protestants say, I am who I am. But in the Old Testament, when it is translated by the Jewish people, yes, um, in the Chabad. So you go to Chabad.org, C-H-A-B-A-D.org, and you find the Jewish uh, translation in English, the Jewish uh, Torah in English. And they translate it different over there. So the question remains, Yahweh is actually a tetragrammaton. It doesn't even have vowels. You can't call it Yahweh because you cannot even pronounce it with just four consonants. I agree. but. Can, can I read this? And how would you? And I'm actually very interested. How would you? Yeah. Res, what do you think Jesus was saying here? So uh, he's debating the Jews. Which passage and, is this? Uh, this is John 8:56 through yeah. 59. Uh, it's Jesus talking to you said, "Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw and was glad." And they said, "You're not 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham." And Jesus says, "Very truly I tell you," Jesus answered, "Before Abraham was, I am." And this they picked up stones to stone him for blasphemy, but he hid himself. It's an obvious reference to Exodus 3.14 no. where it says, what's he saying? No, it's not obvious. The reason for that is because number one, in 3.14, the question was asked, what was the name? Mm -hmm. What is your name? Moses is asking God, what is your name? Did he give a name? No, he did not. He says, no, he says, I am who I am. That is not a name. It is like, it is like evading the question Moses asked. So God is giving him, um, he's, he's basically just say, I am who I am. I me mean, just say God sent you. Yes, Ahye, Asher, Ahye. It does not say Yahweh there in 314. In 315 it does. Okay? In the next passage. And that is when he says Yahweh. But, Yahweh but even comes from that Ahwe. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yahweh is a tetragrammaton. I am who I am is a phrase. Okay? So the, I think that the Trinitarians are reading too much between the lines over there. So you have to agree with Jesus when he prays and worships. Only the Father, and he advocates the same thing to his disciples. He says the same thing. Let me just point something out to you. So, what's your name? Jane. He says, God replied to Moses, I am who I am, which yeah. you said. Say this to the people of Israel. I am a Yeah, like I said, that's a Protestant Bible. Go and look at kabbad.org. 
and see how the Jews translate it because it is their language. In fact, the reason, the reason the term Yahweh doesn't appear even once in the entire New Testament speaks volumes, isn't it? How can you exclude the name of God from, from the book of God? In the Old Testament, it appears 6,000, nearly 7,000 times. And in the New Testament, zero times. Why? Earlier we made a point that no one worshiped Jesus, right? Uh, no, no, no. You, I, I don't think you have answered the question. The question is very clear. Show me anywhere in the New Testament or the Old Testament where anyone worships a triune God, which should include the Holy Spirit as well. Don't, don't keep sidelining him, guy. Come on. Okay, well, they did worship There should be Jesus. no discrimination in the Trinity. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. Yeah, again, like I said, it is not the term latrio which should be used there. Go and good, look at the Greek translation and you'll see. The term latrio is specific to Almighty God only and it's exclusively used only for the Father. Okay? Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah sure, that, sure. Check I, it out. No problem. Yeah, 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 but, but the important thing is here is when Jesus, there's an explicit passage in the Bible, John 17, 3. Do you, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. yep. When he says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, referring to the Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So when you have an explicit statement like that, where Jesus identifies that there is only one person who is the only true God. Who is that? Who is that? He says the one true God. Who is that? The only true God, not one true God. The only exclusive. Why wouldn't he say the one true Father? Why wouldn't he say that? He, if he, if he, he actually does actually. He says the only true God is the Father. The reason the Christians do not want to take on board this explicit passage and look for ambiguous ones and try to interpret them like the I am passage, which makes no sense to be honest. Yes, because if Jesus is telling people to worship only the Father, to pray to only the Father, and then you guys are claiming, no, actually he's also God. I mean, it goes against the teaching of Jesus. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll follow my teachings. Do you love Jesus? Yeah. Then, for, then obey one, then worship one God, one person, not three persons. I disagree, but we can go, we can go in circles. Well, you can disagree, but whom are you disagreeing with? Not me. You're disagreeing with Jesus. So if you loved him, follow his teachings, not I mine. Will, I will have to stand before the Lord one day and account for my believing in the Trinity. And why is that? Why do you have to account for the Trinity when the Trinity is not, not even the concept? I'm not talking even of the word. The concept of the Trinity is not in the entire Bible. Why? I, it I, speaks volumes, doesn't it? The reason the church took 300 years to establish the doctrine of Trinity in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 and in the Council of Constantinople in the year 381 when it was fully established along with the Holy Spirit. 380 years. Yes? Just to establish this key doctrine, you know why? Because it's extra biblical, it's not in the Bible. I mean, imagine this, if it was in the Bible, why would all this, you have these multiple councils, multiple disagreements among the early church fathers? I do see it introduced in the Bible, not necessarily called in, you know, in bright red letters or whatever. It should be, that's your core. That's the Trinity, but what bro, I Bro, I'm not asking it. for the May world. I just speak for one second, yeah. because we have to go. But I see the Father revealed to us through the Bible. I see Jesus revealed to us, and I see Jesus the Holy the Spirit Father, revealed to us. Okay, so it's a, tri a tritheism then. So there's, there's That's tritheism. If you're going to just focus on three different persons to worship, okay? Because the Trinity doesn't mean three persons. You know that. The Trinity means the three persons are one being God. Yeah. Because that is what you have to prove to me. How are the three, three one? In one? Okay. How are the three one? You have shown me, let's say for example, for the sake of argument, that you have established each individual uh, person that you have just mentioned okay. is divine. Let's say that, yeah, for the sake of argument. You still have to establish the doctrine, sorry, the, what the doctrine of Trinity says, which is the three are one being, the three. So you, can, you have to show me still, where does it say that these three are one? You see what I mean? Again, I think, you know, you read the Old Testament, you look at the language used for Jesus in the New Testament, it is obviously divine language. Look at the Holy Spirit, again. Bro, you I tried everything and I've dismantled it, one by one. Go and watch this video at home. You gave me I am, you gave me other passages. Every one of them I proved to you that this is not what Jesus teaches. You know, one thing I noticed, and no offense to you guys, but every Christian makes this error. They ignore the explicit passages and they will do anything to twist the implicit to make it sound like the Trinity. Why would you ignore the explicit passage from Jesus himself? That the only true God is the Father. If there is only one person who is the only true God, 
Can anyone else be God? Are you citing uh, John seventeen three? Yeah, read it. Yeah, again, the, the one true God. I think it says. No, no, you you keep saying one. you keep saying one true God. It says only. It says only. You know, only is more exclusive than just one. Okay, I, I will say though, in the same book, we obviously that's just, that's John, right? Give me think, explicit. I want explicit, like the way Jesus said. Okay. Give me something explicit, not ambiguous, okay. which I can easily refute, like the way I did already. Okay, just. So John, so John has a theology in writing John believes something, okay? Yeah. And so if John believes what you said, that Jesus wasn't God, why did you say the word referring to Jesus was with God and was God? Why does Thomas in the same gospel say, my Lord and my God, when talking about Jesus? And again, you follow that theme all throughout John. Either, either John's been changed, which, you know, okay, maybe, or John actually believed that Jesus was God because John 1, John 20, yeah, John 20, uh, I don't know, 7, you have to reconcile those things. You can't take one verse out of its context. There are obvious verses in there that exclaim Jesus as God. Okay, so remember earlier I told you the term God is used different ways in the Bible? So wait, 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 wait. The term God, which is Elohim, Okay, if you translate into Hebrew, or Adonai, if you translate into Hebrew as well, I think. So this term is, is used interchangeably for humans, for angels, for Almighty God as well, and even for human beings, you know. But John was written in Greek, not in Hebrew. That's why the term God, which is, I think, Theos in Greek. The Satan is the Theos of the world, of the cosmos. There you go. Are you going to worship Jesus, uh, uh, Satan, Satan as well? Yeah. No, you won't. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 4. Like I said, don't bring me ambiguous. Bring me explicit. So, like the way Jesus says, the only true God is the Father. So okay? you're saying Jesus was an Elohim? Because that seems, you know, very, uh, I don't know. that Because that's, that is, again, that is what John's saying. If, if Jesus is Elohim, so is uh, Moses. So, is, uh, the angel, so are the angels. So are the Jews. Why well, are we going to stop, man? Come on. Don't bring in ambiguous. How many times I told you? Give me something explicit. Because the term God is used interchangeably in the Bible. Whether you use it in Greek or in English or in Hebrew, they use interchangeably. The term Elohim, Adonai are Hebrew. Okay? The term Theos is Greek. The term God is English. All of these terminologies are used interchangeably for other than Almighty God. You know, that is the beauty of Arabic in, 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 in the Quran, where the term Allah can only be used exclusively for the Almighty God and nobody else. So you can use the term Ilah, yes, for other deities, but the term Allah, the name of God, and the term which means the Almighty God, the only one worthy of worship, yes, is exclusive. So that, you see the beauty of the Quran is that it doesn't use this com uh, complicated, uh, confusing and um, ambiguous terminology which can apply to many other beings other than God Almighty. I think you're reading it. What else could, Tom, what could Thomas mean when he falls at Jesus' feet and says, My Lord and my God? Yeah. What, what else, what else can he? Like I said, look at the Greek term for worship. I keep telling you that and you keep repeating yourself. So please go home and look whether the term is Latio or Proskinio. Go and look at the Greek. That's why I said go and look at it. And, and why do the English translations, when Thomas said that, add an exclamation? Why? You know what is the meaning of exclamation in English or in any other language? I don't think the Greek or the Hebrew at that time had exclamation marks. They didn't even have small letter G, like the way many people say, oh, it's a small G with God. It's not big G. Oh, come on. They didn't even have a small G. This is a later interpretation. It says he exclaimed. When someone exclaims something, it's usually in the context of No, it's exclaiming. not. Yes. It's not. Imagine if, if you had a child and you lost your child in the market. Yes? And you've been searching all day and suddenly you see your child and you exclaim, my Lord and my God, I found him. Are you going to have an exclamation mark behind him? Yes, that's an exclamation. So you wouldn't take that literally. And anyone who hears that, that they will not take it literally. That's, a very, that's very subjective on your end. Though. My friend, that's called an exclamation. I gave you an analogy of an exclamation. No one takes an exclamation every time it's been made as being what? Literal. Do you really think there's more of a chance that he's making an exclamation not talking about Jesus? Actually, yeah. You know why? Because the, the Jews at that time would never ever worship a man as God. Never. Which is why Christianity breaks away from Judaism. And it obviously says in Matthew... Oh, wait, 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 wait. The earliest Christians were not Jews. They were. 
Many of them yeah, were Jews. Yeah, many of yeah, many of the yeah. you know, the, but that's what I meant because Thomas was a Jew. So yeah. the earliest Christians, many of them were Jews. They came from that background. But even then, they wouldn't worship a man as God. Okay, they always made a distinction, and that's the reason John, John himself in his in his book in John seven and three. I keep giving the explicit. You keep going to the ambiguous. What about John? Well, how would you translate John seven and three? I really want to know. I think the same way. How? Oh, that the only true God is the yeah. Father? We do have to go. We've got yeah. Yeah. Okay, before you go, one last statement again from the same chapter. Yes? Do you believe God shares His glory with anyone? No, but God, God, no. But Jesus Christ is God. We believe That wasn't that. the question. Does God Almighty share His glory with anyone? Our um, revelation came down. That wasn't, that's not, I'm not asking about revelation, I'm asking, you know what the glory, you know what the glory of God is? Can he share that with you? Set the context first. No, no, no. Yeah, that, that I don't think. Glory, 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 glory. No, no, glory is not revelation. Glory is what makes him God Almighty. So you cannot even look at him when you're looking at the glory of God. He's so powerful and his glory is so, I think it's something which is unbearable for mortal eyes. And that is the reason we have a story of Moses when he wanted to see yes. Allah, he couldn't see him. Yes, he said, if you can withstand that mountain, if, sorry, if that mountain can withstand, yes, while I show this, uh, this, this, what he said, this light, and it can withstand, then you will be able to bear it. Yeah. So when, when that happened, you know, the mountain was reduced to ash, yeah. and Moses fainted. Yeah. And when he, when, he, when he woke up, then he realized, this is something that I shouldn't have requested. Because the glory of God is such that you cannot even, you cannot, yeah, and that's yeah, the reason the Bible says in many pl places that no one can see God and live. Yes. See what I mean? Yeah. So once again, the question, does God share his glory with anyone? I, I will say, I, I really do have to go. Read John 1, read John 1, and I really think you can't Okay, read John that John 1, 1 doesn't answer the question. The, the answer is actually in the book of Isaiah. How okay, you, is, is it, wait, wait, my friend, wait, wait a minute. In Isaiah 42, I believe it's verse number 8, where God explicitly says, I will not share my glory with anyone. I'll not give my glory to anyone or share it with anyone. Guess what? In John 17, 3, Jesus is praying. You know what he's praying to? He's praying for God to give him the glory that he had before the world began. Yes? Why does Jesus then in John 17, 21, give that glory which God gave him? Yes, by the way, it wasn't the glory of God he gave. It is the glory of Jesus he gave him. So wait, wait. So Jesus then shares his glory with the disciples, with all the believers. Whereas God in, is it, sorry, in, um, in Isaiah 42 made it very clear that he does not share his glory. So that also disqualifies Jesus as God. Another thing, Jesus is not immortal like God. He died according to your belief. Jesus is ignorant of the last hour. So he's not omniscient like God. So they are not co-equal in nature. We believe he died, but then he came back to life three days later. And revealed yeah, which again proves, you know what does that prove? Both, mean? both the death of Jesus and the resurrection prove that he's not immortal, because that applies to mortals, and so does resurrection. Please, one one thing we really have to go. And, and again, if, if you discount the book of John, is not. I don't know how you argue with this. This is Trinitarian. Language. Are you going to bring uh, an ambiguous passage again? No, no, no. no just, I don't think this is okay. ambiguous. Go on. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, yeah. and the Word was God. That's verse 1. Read verse 14. The Word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. Okay. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The, Lord, the Word was God, the Word became flesh. Okay, That's so once, once again, once again, you're using the term God. Like I said, this term is used loosely in the Bible. And and, and the very, wait, wait, the this very start. Very weak place to I haven't finished yet. No, no, I haven't. I've shown you several references where the term God is used very loosely. It's used for Satan. It's used for angels. It's used for human beings. So it's not ambiguous. It's very clear. What you said is ambiguous. The very start of that, in the beginning was the word. Beginning, what beginning? Does God have a beginning? That's obviously relating back to Genesis 1. In the beginning, God yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Obviously, that was talking about the creation of God. So are you saying Jesus was the creation of God? No, 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 no. no <laughs> He just wait, said, wait, obviously. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, beginning of what? The beginning of Genesis is talking about the creation of God. No, no, no. In the beginning, God created the heavens okay. and the earth. Thank you, obviously. which is so, creation. Yeah. Which in is the creation. Beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning was what? the word. No, no, wait. Does God have a beginning? I'm not saying so that. why does why does it start with in the beginning? What does it in mean the beginning, the beginning, what the word was, not the word was. So in the beginning of what, my friend? Can you explain that? 
in the beginning in Hebrew, okay, in Hebrew in Genesis, it's not in the beginning, it's just in the beginning, as in this starts. Do you all not believe it? It says bara. In Hebrew is bara. Bara means the beginning, same like English. So don't tell me that the origin which the Genesis talked about was about the creation. So unless you're telling me, John, sorry, unless you're telling me John is saying, uh, Jesus was the creation of God. Yes, you maybe have a point, hey, I, which I, we Muslims sorry, believe he was indeed the creation of God. I'm sorry to cut this short. It's been a, a great talking yeah. with you. It's a pleasure indeed. Yeah. It's been educational. And what's you your know, name again? Scott. 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 What's your name? Hashim. Stephen. Stephen. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Okay. Um, We're going to put this on Dawah Wise. So have a look. Okay. I'm going to cut. Okay. I'm going to keep it as it is. What's it called? Uh, it's called Dawah Wise. Oh. Sure yeah, you can. We, I will look can into the any of the things that you've mentioned. Yeah, you made some very good points, so thank yeah, you. Can you go to the YouTube? You will find it. Absolutely. Take a picture of this. <laughs> I'm writing it down. Y'all have a blessed day. Thank yeah. you. All right, take, take care, care, guys. Speaking to you. Wa alaikum salam. Are you doing all right? I'm doing. Let me. Let me.